Hello guys and welcome to the channel. So today we have got Meher on the channel who will be unveiling his journey from working as a software developer back in India in one of the biggest company which is called Reliance Geo and all the way through to in the UK and he's currently doing computer science right here at Newcastle University. Let's see how does his journey looks like, what was the application process in terms of pursuing computer science. So without any further ado, let's get started and start grinding begin. So first of all, Mihir, can you just let us know what was your background and what you used to do back in India and what was your journey? For example, you were in your high school, then moving to your college life and then towards your geo company. What was that all journey and how did you develop your interest in terms of becoming a software developer? So thank you so much for having on this, uh, me on this video first. No worries. And uh, for my background, as in I was in uh, Mumbai studying uh, Bachelor's of Electronics and Telecommunication in, back in India in M Mumbai University. I completed that in 2016. Before that I was doing my uh, uh, plus two in science and that was in uh, 2012 and it was in Mumbai as well. And uh, in while I was doing my engineering in Electronics and Telecom, uh, in the final year I was doing a project on robotics. Uh, okay. And in robotics, we had to code the robot, uh, the microcontroller and all. So I had uh, done a lot of coding there back then. So I developed my interest uh, back then in the final year of my engineering and I decided that we'll make a career in coding. So I decided to apply for companies, blue chip companies for uh, IT sector, uh, telecom sector, whichever the companies were. Then I tried in LNT Infotech, Reliance Geo, TCS. Uh, these companies. Uh, fortunately, I got a job in uh, LNT Infotech uh, okay. uh, from the college placements, and uh, I was a trainee there for four months. After completing that training, I was not uh, uh, interested in data science, which they, the training was in. So I was uh, pretty more interested in coding, uh, okay. pure coding. So I tried to apply for more jobs, and fortunately, the application which I made for Reliance Geo that worked for me. And I got a job as a software developer in Reliance Geo in uh, okay. 2017. 2017. Do you want to like kind of break down what was the process in terms of going through to the company such as Reliance Geo, which is a very big company. I think it would be kind of an inspiration if you can talk through that. How did you actually went to that company as well? Yeah, so in, back in 2017, Geo was just launched and it was a very big, big dream for everyone to get in that company. Fortunately, because of some references, I got into the company. Oh, good. My friend was there working already and she referenced me there and uh, I got uh, a chance to give an interview ah, okay. and the company was uh, uh, quite uh, happy with the interview and they let me know, know that they will uh, give me the offer letter. Exactly. Uh, within three months, I got my offer letter and the joining process was done. Ah, definitely. Okay. Okay. So I think like it's like great to know that you know first of all you need to be having your interest making your right resume for the company you're applying to and definitely your references plays a big role and after doing your references you can get an interview for such big companies at the interview stage I think it's more driven by the interest like as he said he has got interest in coding so I think that's the main factor that you should be passionate about your studies and that is what I always emphasize on this channel as well whether it's coming to UK as well. So moving on, I want to ask him that uh, what were your insights in terms of working as a software developer in such a big company as Reliance Geo? How was the things going on? How was the work culture, the values which Geo offered you? So whenever you are into a big company, they have a lot of users already. Your Reliance uh, at Geo was having the largest user base when I was working and that was a big pressure. And to become, work in a company like that, you have a lot of pressure working around. Yeah. You have big teams to work around, you have big uh, 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 projects to go through. So while working there, you have your perks for being in the company, for being in the biggest company of India right now. For, but you have that kind of a pressure too. Uh, some, uh, I remember yeah. some days I was just sleepless for two nights. Uh, yeah. Working around. <laughs> yeah. So that was great and that was a big learning curve for me. And uh, the three years over there was like a huge amount of experience. That's what uh, made me come here and get an admit in a prestigious yeah. university. 
exactly i think that is the thing which we talk about it's like your experience which help him like you know pushing and also kind of revising his own life you know where he's lacking you know might be he's doing well in the electronics and telecom but he might be thinking that you know there's something lacking in terms of your computer science that is a basic course and i think that's the main reason that he has came back here right in uk and computer science is doing there that's so right. th that that's that's basically an inspiration for the people who are watching and moving on i want to know that like, uh, what was your application process uh, for your computer science like for example once once you were like thinking about leaving geo and uh, what other countries did you apply to and what was the application process through what you applied so that people can help out so uh, can i take names yeah, yeah no no worries so i applied uh, through an uh, consulting agency called idp education and uh, there were three countries which i was interested in back then and uh, in july june i started applying in three countries okay that was australia canada and uk uh, okay but back then uh, uk the psw scheme was not introduced yeah okay okay exactly. so there was no com com complete dis uh, discussion about that so it was it will happen or it might not happen so that's why uk was there and there were two more options but obviously uk was better as the, uh, it was a one year degree program yeah, yeah. for masters and then we are getting a psw now of 2 years so that's confirmed by the uk government and uh, the canada process and the uh, australia process was still going on i was applying into uh, the best of the universities in australia and canada as well but uh, i did not get some reward from uh, some of the universities which i wanted to go in canada uh, okay okay, uh, okay i got some uh, so rewards from some of the universities i got reject also from some of the universities okay okay in australia most of the universities i got the offer letter but then i i had issues with the finances uh, okay, and exactly. the okay. uh, two years course and then i got into uh, a, a thing in australia that you have to work for the work there in the city and not in the village uh, so uh, in the right. okay. city area for two okay. years okay after okay. that you can move to a bigger city okay so that's like quite important this is like his opinions coming on in terms of what are the requirements for different types of countries and also it depends upon the university to university exactly. i think like the yeah. uh, australian universities might be having different requirements canadian yeah. different uk different you know exactly so for one point uh, as in uk doesn't require ielts if you have uh, 80% and more in uh, english in your 12th standard uk doesn't ask for an for an ielts score but i have to i i i have given the ielts because the, it was required for canada, canada australia yeah, exactly exactly so, exactly but uh, because i had given ielts it was much easier in uk also to get in the admission ah uh, definitely and here i would also like to mention that for myself at least uh, i'm doing like undergraduate degree and just as a motivation i didn't personally require ielts because i got about 96 marks so if you i think uh, it's basically about 70% i think yeah, for different universities 70, it depends 70. upon like university to university as well but as long as you're getting more than 70% and like especially above 90% i think in most of the cases you won't be requiring alex but it's always good to check with the university to university really tell now i think you've got a bit of an idea that what is a person back in india think about you know in terms of the work culture and uh, eventually his journey to come to uk doing his computer science i think it will be good to know that what he has got in terms of his advices and opinions for all of you guys who are watching and who are aspiring to come to a broad country such as uk australia whichever it is so let's see like what are his advices and opinions and uh, also like in the practical reality for example when he was traveling did he face some of the issues there let's have that opinion as well as an opinion as a student who is completely uh, successful in uh, coming to uk i would just like to say that there will be many obstacles when you apply when you try to come in the new country when you try to explore some courses there will be many obstacles even i fa faced those obstacles obstacles i faced the financial obstacles i faced the uh, uh, requirement obstacles everything because of the covid yes yeah. that was the biggest obstacle but still you have to strive and you have to be determined that you will get there once and that is the only goal you have you don't have anything else in the mind you just need to uh, do your course you just need to study you just need to be a good student and you have to strive for that that's it as per as per the uh, uh, things i faced in the journey yes i traveled with uh, one of the airlines uh, and they they had some baggage uh, baggage limits Uh, i was completely in the baggage limits uh, as per the kgs they have mentioned ah, okay. but still uh, the uh, dimensions of the uh, cabin bag they okay. mentioned uh, 
uh, I had bit extended that dimension and the clothes were bit puffed up in the back. Uh, okay, okay. So okay, okay, the okay. official just stopped me before checking in uh, okay. and he was like, you will have to uh, remove it or either you have to shift it or you have to pay the money. So I have to, I had to remove a lot of uh, woolen clothes and because of that, I'm feeling cold here. Definitely like it was on the airport, right? On the airport, on the airport. Ah, on Mumbai okay. airport, I had okay. to sit down, okay. I had to remove some clothes. Ah, and exactly. fortunately, my parents were there outside. Exactly, so I exactly. took the clothes and gave it to them. Ah. Maybe they'll courier it next time. Ah. So exactly. I think you are still that lucky. Experience. I think you have been still lucky that your parents were there. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. it would have been really weird, like on the spot. You are like, you know, removing the clothes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So this is something to look out as well in terms of the. So you will have to like abide that. the dimensions that uh, yeah, website is. Uh, the com company mentions it on the website. Yeah. If you don't, you will be in a mess at, uh, at the airport. Exactly. So that you want, you should avoid. Exactly. And the one more like great thing which I've learned from him is that uh, to be strong, you know, whenever you're coming in such a broad country, as you talked about willpower, staying strong, even like in such unprecedented times when you've got COVID situation, you are still here. You're making sure that you're attending your university. I think it's starting next week. Yes, it's starting. Uh, however, like you're making sure that you know you are comfortable in your accommodation, and also you've started looking for part-time jobs as well, which is a really good sign, as you've told me. So I think overall, I think uh, you are on the right track. And let's hope, like, uh, how does the things go like let's later hope, on on the stage? Let's hope it goes By the way, right. just one quick question as well. Anything which you've missed uh, back from India, like something like which was unique about India and you missed right here? Like I know it has been uh, just few days, but anything you want to say in terms surely, of Surely, surely I do. I mean, I have been in the quarantine for 14 days 14 and there days. was a long period. But yes, my friends and family was completely there for me, calling me, video calling me all the time. My mom uh, teaching me cooking from the video calls. And yes, the thing I miss the most is I'm a vegetarian. Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> when you are yeah. a vegetarian in a foreign country, I mean, I've been to a lot of uh, supermarkets, but still you don't find that uh, craving food which you, a vegetarian wants. Vegetarian wants. Like the vegetarian. fried food, the homemade food, every, I mean the food which you miss a lot of India. I mean, you can't get that anywhere. Exactly. So enjoy your food whenever you're in India, coming back to your or bring some food. You will be good for some days at least. Even yeah. just I remember one more thing, like when I came here in terms of our badge of Indian students, there was one of us were from Delhi and uh, he was like a big fan of Maggi. Oh. And uh, by the way, you can't find Maggi in Tesco since but any of you and he was like struggling and even he's a vegetarian like you. And but how about this like shopping list pound then? Yeah. So if you ever want Maggi, just go to pound then and you'll get one. Sure. And definitely I think paneer, paneer as well. I don't think so. You can't find that paneer which you get back there. Fortunately, I find a shop which you get uh, all ah, the Indian all shop. right. Oh, that's good. So that's, that's lovely. A good one. Yeah, lovely. So I think like any for vegetarian, it's like a kind of a shout out for them. Find the local shops which are like Indian stores which can serve you out. Otherwise, yeah, it's gonna be in a big mess here. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> So thank you very much, Mead. Thank you, thank uh, you. I want to really appreciate you that he was a guy that uh, he contacted me through like Instagram and all the services that he wanted to share his experience. And I definitely think he has made that impact out with all of you guys that how, what was his journey in terms of working as a software developer and his reason behind coming to UK. I think you've made a lot great impact for the audience who is watching this video. And thanks very much for coming on the channel. Thank you for having me here. And I hope everyone uh gets a bit of help with because of this video exactly thank you man thank you, thank you. cheers